Coming up on Tech Thing is Eero 2, really twice as fast as the original Eero. We're going to find out. New gaming keyboard and mouse from Alienware, the best SD USB burner ever, and El Cantaro. All that more coming up on Tech Thing. Thank you, patrons. We got a new build video up just for you at patreon.com slash tech thing. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to make the show for you each and every week. Join the crew that makes Tech Thing possible at patreon.com slash tech thing. Thank you. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we have something useful in every show. Oh my goodness. What do we have today? Most of them think that they're just dropping like flies at Equifax. Oh no. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. In the, oh wait, here it is. Equifax CEO Richard Smith is out after a huge data breach. Oh. That's the Equifax homepage. You may have been spending a lot of time oh. there recently. Suddenly retires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure that was quite sudden. Yeah. Rough, no surprise there. Rough week over there. Oh, yeah. Not to mention all the other stuff that's going on with Equifax. If you want to find out more, hit up my ThreatWire episode at youtube.com slash hack5. What is something really awesome? What? You can finally ask Alexa to play music on the music app. Oh, yay. That's cool. So, mm -hmm. How useful. I bring that up because there's a, 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 a smart coffee maker. Oh, no. I cannot talk about it yet, I don't think, because... You just talked about it, though. But I didn't, talk, I, I didn't mention <laughs> names. It, I'm just saying smart coffee maker. Oh, man. That of course a, there is. There's a smart thing for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm almost tempted to try the smart coffee maker, or at least I will be until I see the price on it, at which point okay. my eyeballs will start bleeding. Well, I don't drink coffee. I just drink Frappuccino, so you can let me ho <laughs> know how it goes, and then I will be the one that tries to hack it. You'll be the one with the... You're waiting for the home Frappuccino system. Uh-huh. That's all I need in my life. What you need is one of those Snoopy snow cone makers. <laughs> I could <laughs> live an off of it. And espresso machine. I could live off of it. And corn syrup. Yeah. A big old bottle of corn syrup. Oh, God. Ah. So gross. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no. I'm going to say it. Pumpkin spice anything. I just <laughs> can't do it. Yes, it's true. You love the pumpkin spice. I love me some pumpkin spice. It's it's good stuff. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's go ahead and go on into our first question of this week. It's from Toby. Toby's got a question about Eero, which is the mesh networking system. Eero 2 is out. Should I upgrade from my first generation Eero system? It's supposed to be twice as fast. From Toby. So I should say disclaimer uh, for Hack Tip, which is also on youtube.com slash hack5. It's uh, my educational show about hacking and stuff like that in Linux. Um, they are sponsoring on that show. So I'm not doing this review. Patrick is. I will hold my own opinions. <laughs> the uh, so one of these is the original Eero, and the other one is the new Eero base station. Okay. And uh, the reality is, the biggest change on the Eero, the new Eero system, at Eero 2.0, is this critter here at Eero Beacon. Uh, so if you're not familiar, Eero, this company, literally kickstarted the mesh networking craze with an actual Kickstarter project, yeah. uh, and they kind of were the first out of the gate. Now, if you're not familiar with mesh networking, it's <sighs> deploying multiple hardware devices around your home that are centrally controlled so they deliver thick, delicious, high-speed Wi-Fi at all the corners where you couldn't get it before. Yay! Yeah, I'm oversimplifying. You and are. I'm making fun <laughs> of it. Um, That's but, okay, though. It's basically what it does. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I've done systems, two generations from Eero. I've done Unify systems. I've done Amplify systems. I've done Netgear's Orbi and then mm -hmm. at least four or five others. And they all basically do one thing. They put a bunch of devices around your house or your office and then they make the Wi-Fi work. Yeah. Um, they're really amazing. If you have a particularly complicated house, if you've got multiple levels or concrete basements or horsehair plaster in the walls, yeah. feel free to laugh now. Um, they are amazing. And I also gotta say, I love the Mesh Network products because they're all steering to the side of sort of sophisticated rather than giant radioactive spy-fi crown. <laughs> um, not that there's That's basically wrong. what I have at home is one of those like Asus <laughs> routers that's like tons of antennas yeah. going everywhere. And they're like, Big scary, you it's know, very, yes, very sci-fi <laughs> antenna crown spikes. But um, so beacons. The thing about the beacons, right, is they're half the size of the original Eero boxes, mm -hmm. and they plug directly into the wall. And what's really funny about them is they actually have a little night light built in. And yes, you can control it if you want to make sure it's off. Do not install them upside down because antennas. And uh, you'll notice they also don't have the <laughs> Ethernet jacks. Every eth like all the so original. So there's no ground port on there. There's no ground port yeah. on here. So you can pretty much install it anywhere. Uh, I mean, there's no ground port in most of the power tools. But don't at this stick point. it up upside 
I almost did it. <laughs> but don't stick it upside Up down <laughs> because the antennas would then pointing, be pointing down and you want to get the, uh, the networking from it. The I'm bandwidth. just doing what the nice manual told me to do. Um, but yeah, the other thing is like if you're one of the rare kind of, in my case I actually had some audio gear which I could use uh, the ethernet ports oh. on the additional Eero boxes to connect to. That's not going to happen with a beacon because the beacon mm -hmm. doesn't have the ethernet ports. Right. So, I'm probably kind of a rare user that actually used the remote Ethernet ports on at least two base stations. Um, so the new base station though drops the USB port from the old model. It's got two Ethernet jacks, one for the internet, one to connect your Ethernet switch or a single Ethernet device in your, well, wherever you keep your gear. And Eero also claims it's twice as powerful as before and they packed the third radio into the box. Mm. Now, Netgear's Orbi and Linksys's uh, Velop, for example, uh, they also use a third band, but they more, more like a kind of a dedicated backhaul, especially for Netgear's Orbi. It has ridiculous performance. Um, the original Eero did not have that that extra uh, five gigahertz bandwidth, um, mm -hmm. and they gave you basically three of the same Eero in the box. Now the new Eero comes with a base station and one or two of the smaller beacons. Three hundred bucks gets you an Eero and a beacon. Four hundred bucks gets you an Eero and two beacons. That's the configuration we actually tested. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> As he drops one. <laughs> <laughs> it leapt to its death. I didn't touch it. Um, so Toby, you've got Eero and you're wondering if you should upgrade. First thought, uh, the beacons look attractive and they are backwards compatible with the Gen 1 Eero systems if you want to add additional ones or just have something. Because some people love the idea of having this plugged somewhere. Because right. it, you know, it sits, it's by a lamp. People ask you, what's that? Well, it's an Eero box. What's that? It's a mesh networking box. Wow, it doesn't look like crappy networking hardware. No, because they didn't want it to look ugly. Um, I use Network Performance Test. It's a Windows Store app that runs a variation of iPerf 3, which is normally run on Linux. Um, the initial testing had me going, what? <laughs> I mean, so let me let me pull up like, this is what I call like my best case testing here. Okay. And so this is the Eero base station or the base station in the front closet of my house where I normally keep all my networking gear. And the Eero first generation is right here, 140 megabits per second. Okay. And when I started testing the second generation Eero, it bounced between 87 and 189 megabits per second. Oh, that yeah. is weird. It was really weird. Uh, I was wondering, maybe it was connecting to a different Eero box, maybe something was wrong. So I went inside the closet with the Eero box and got like two feet away from it, and okay. I got something in the neighborhood of 320 megabits per second. Oh, wow. So but my of course you're super close to it, though. Yeah, I mean, I was literally like in my you know little closet yeah. up next to the AVR. <laughs> um, so what I actually did at that point, and let me recenter my chart here, is I moved the Eero box, you know, out from inside the closet. I took two layers of, of plaster basically uh, out from between me and the boxes, and it went up to 247 megabits per second. Okay. That's a nice number, about a 176% improvement wow. over the first gen Eero. Though again, I did have to basically get it out of the closet and get a couple layers of horsehair plaster out of the way to get to those numbers. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, so you know, that was that was kind of curious for me. Mm -hmm. um, this poorly labeled chart, because uh, I have completely lost all of my bar chart foo, <laughs> but you'll notice that one of these bars is bigger than the other. This represents my hell test in the far corner of my house. With the uh, first two or three routers in my house, there was basically zero signal in this back bedroom of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first generation Eero 3, which is 38.3 megabits per second. Oh. And the Eero 2 <laughs> delivered a healthy 165% boost, or basically 63 megabits per second. Nice, okay. Yes. So it did increase it. It did increase it. 200%, not exactly, but not, there was a yeah. healthy bump. So the real question is, Toby, is whether or not that extra bump is something that you actually mm -hmm. need, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, 38 megabits per second in the worst corner of the house is still enough to stream 4K. Yeah. Um, you know, technically. Technically. In theory. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes 4K does its own thing. It's certainly enough to stream 1080p. Now, if you had three kids back there and they were all streaming things simultaneously, um, having the extra bandwidth might be a big help. What about the app? Does that change at all? Pretty much the same exact thing. In fact, I'm using the same app to control a first generation system and a second generation system. Oh, that's Tec good. Yeah, well, they're technically they're in my house, both in my house, but I just use one at a time. Okay. Um, but that's one of the cool things about the application. Like, it's really simple. Everything looks good. You have seven connected devices. Um, what's really tripping me out about now is, is this is essentially the activity at home. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute, right? So if you want to change settings, you, you can, can totally go in. creep on your family and see what they're doing. Yeah. What are they doing right now? <laughs> Just kidding. 
Is that not, weird? We're not quite that bad. <laughs> um, but you know, for example, like I'm still getting 100. You know, I'm getting 100 say 187 megabits down and mm -hmm. 137 megabits up. That's really on good. My home router and it's 50 bucks a month. Nice. Comment on that. Oh um, man, that ISP. I hope um, they end up being available where I live. That'd be so nice. That would be really nice. I can go in here and turn the LED, LED light off. Mm -hmm. If I want to go into a device, I have seven connected devices and I list all the devices here and oh look, I can go in and look at things, profile, unassigned. So you cool. can go in and play stuff. Some of it's like, I still think it's an incredible pain. Like I would like to be able to do static IP addresses yeah. in a simpler way. Yeah. Um, but Eero's erring towards the let's make things as simple as possible. And all the mm -hmm. controls, even the little nightlight controls, are pretty much run through the app. That's nice. Yeah, uh, Eero TechSport uh, can nose in there if something's wrong, which kind of oh, okay. freaks me out. But then again, um, if it's my mom calling them instead of me yeah. and getting it to run, uh, that's actually not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, Eero 2 includes support for Thread. Thread? Yeah. What is Thread? It's a new protocol for smart home stuffage like locks and motion sensors. And it's nice, but there are literally no Thread products currently available. <laughs> so it's kind of a, well, it, it's They're kind future-proofing. Yeah. Okay. It may be a future that never comes, but that opportunity is there. Okay. Um, they also have Eero Plus now, which is a new $10 a month, $100 a year subscription service that adds more parental controls and additional security services. And they, they're going to stop phishing and all sorts mm -hmm. of nastiness. Um, frankly, um, the big attraction for a lot of people might that you get faster access to mm -hmm. Euro customer support if you if you pay the extra ten bucks a month. But for me, they were incredibly fast the one time I've ever needed to contact them, and they got a new unit shipped out really really fast. So I don't see a particular need for that. If you're looking for an additional layer of security, it is certainly an option there. Um, I think the solution to phishing is never letting my children have email. Yeah, but that's really. a whole other conversation. <laughs> so yeah. I am really curious how the Eero compares to the Netgear Orbi, the Amplify, and the basic like sub one hundred dollar router. Do you think we can do something like I that? I think we can do something like that next week. Yes, yes. I, I will say being able to relocate your router to the center of your house instead of putting it in a far ugly corner like I do. Yeah. Huge difference. Big difference. And we'll talk about that next week. <laughs> cool. I'm going to bet somewhere in the next three minutes of our lives, we will see an alien face carved in aluminum. I could be wrong, but we're talking about new peripherals from Alienware. <laughs> Shannon's got the TactX mouse mat, which I don't think we're going to get too in-depth on because it's a mouse pad. Because <laughs> it's Gaming, a mouse pad. <laughs> it's a mouse pad. The Elite Gaming Mouse AW958 and the AW768 Gaming Keyboard with Palm Rest. I'm so excited! So first off, I should mention that both the mouse and the keyboard work with Alien FX lighting and the oh. Alien Control Center as mm -hmm. well, which means that they are customized RGB lighting that can match up with your game, or you can just customize them to whatever your favorite color is. The Elite Gaming Mouse, it's the AW958, and this one is $89.99 on the Dell website, or you can get it on Amazon. Currently, it's a little bit cheaper on there as well. and. You have a question. Well, I was I was going to point out like the the kind of the big movement in gaming mice has yes. been like lighter, more plastic. That's true. More light, more yeah. plastic, and you were like, oh yeah. And I was <laughs> like, what is it, Shannon? You were so, like, <laughs> I was excited. So this is anodized aluminum, and it also has that soft touch paint that you see in a lot of mouses sure. these days uh, on the palm area, which gives it a really nice smooth feel. It feels very durable too because of that aluminum, and it also has that nylon cable that you see with a lot of mouses these days as well. Uh, unfortunately, this one is made for righties, and you can kind of tell based on the curvature of the palm rest. I guess you could use it on your left hand, but it probably won't Are work out that well. I am a lefty, but weirdly enough, I shoot arrows, I shoot guns, and I play video games with my right hand. Well, that's convenient. It is convenient. I don't know why it's that way, but that's the way I do things in life. I also think it kind of looks like a transformer. What did you think? I know why you think it looks like a transformer. Do robots, robots in disguise. <laughs> it gets bigger if you've got big hands. It does. It is totally tricked out. I mean, look at all the parts that come with this thing. It's fully customizable. You can use up to 13 programmable buttons on the thing, including this side tilt wheel click, so you can use both clicks at the same time. You can use six buttons on the thumb rest with a little customizable thumb rest additional piece. Both of the wings on both sides are interchangeable to fit your most comfortable grip. And they click into place with these really strong little magnets. Yeah, you give me a magnet.
magnets. And as you saw previously, the palm rest is adjustable for larger <laughs> hands, so you can slide it in or out, especially useful if you have really big hands. I have pretty small hands myself, so I can just leave it in the default setting. The optical sensor on the bottom is a 12,000 DPI optical sensor, and the top button right here allows you to change it to five different pre-configured DPI settings. Wow. The nice thing about that, though, is you can go into the Alienware uh, control center and you can change the DPI setting. So if you prefer it at 100 DPI for some really weird reason, you can set it that low and then include like the very first setting at 100 DPI. And then you can change the, the top one to be 12,000 DPI if you want to, or adjust it in between. There's actually memory on board to store all yes. of the settings? Yes, there <laughs> is. So once you have everything stored in here, you can switch it to another machine if you wanted to, and it will store your DPI settings, which is oh, really, cool. really cool. Uh, the configurable weight on the bottom is also one of my favorite things. I love the fact that they came with weights. I'm just, I'm an old school gamer, you I like guess. You like a heavy mouse. I like a heavy mouse. It's very useful for me. I like that weight in hand. So it comes with these four different weights and each one is five grams. So you can change that up to 20 grams of additional weight. Five to 20. Yeah, five to 20. Balance on just, the left side, balance on the right side, yeah. balance on the inside of the left side, balance yeah. on the inside. You can stick them wherever you want inside the two additional slots on the bottom of the palm rest. I'm going to say it now. I am torn between being absolutely divided with the incredible level of customization and the 32,000 programmable <laughs> buttons on this. It's cool. And knowing that I will die so many times before I can even use like three of the customizable buttons Look at on that. this. And then I can be like, Brah, Transformers! 50 million click lifespan. <laughs> No surprise there. I also noticed that the left and right clicks require a little bit more pressure than I am used to. You mm. might like that, you might not. So you might want to test it out before purchasing. And it by itself, without the additional weights, is 197 mm. grams, which is pretty normal for a gaming mouse. Up next, we have the keyboard. The keyboard is the Alienware Pro Gaming Keyboard. It's the AW768. On the Dell website, it's $119.99. But you can also get it on Amazon for $107, so a little bit cheaper on Amazon, a little bit of a discount. The weird thing about this is it's quiet. Uh, it has brown mechanical switches as opposed to really clicky switches that you'll see on a lot of other gaming keyboards. Uh, that means that it still offers that strong tactile feedback, so when you press down, you feel it whenever it goes into motion, mm -hmm. but without the clicky sounds that you get from blues, for example. Right. So if you need a really quiet keyboard, but you don't want to opt for a non-mechanical switch, which I know a lot of people like me really don't like non-mechanical keyboards, then browns are a really good middle ground to mm -hmm. choose because they are that quiet, but they still have that tactile feedback. It's very unusual for a gaming keyboard these days to be sold with browns. They yeah, are, it's very almost unusual. always reds or blues, mm -hmm. and we actually have a silent red keyboard, which is kind of like Ooh. a brown, but we'll talk about the difference in the review. So this one also has that same 50 million click lifespan that they uh, guarantee, and there's also a 45 gram actuation force on there and 60 gram tactile force, which is pretty normal for yeah. browns. Sometimes you'll see browns at a little bit more actuation force at around 50 grams, but this one's 45. Hmm. And then the travel time on this uh, pre-travel -tra is two millimeters, and then the total travel time is four millimeters. Pretty typical. Yeah, very, very typical. So if you try this out, you probably won't be surprised at how it feels whenever you are playing games and whenever you're pressing down on the keyboard. It does include the anti-ghosting capabilities, so you can get that multi-key action going for MMOs, which is great. The macro keys are like, whoa. On board, they have memory for different pro files and all of the keys are fully customizable but on the side you get those macro keys and you get five uh, different macro keys and you can schedule them to, for up to 15 different uh, key combos so because it has those three different profiles at the top one two three and then you also have the five different keys down here so you have five ten fifteen different options <laughs> that you can play with which makes it really fun uh, the function keys along the top are fully customizable as mm -hmm. well and you can change the lighting on those too plus they have multimedia keys i didn't actually realize how much i really love having a volume roller knob until i actually had one on a keyboard again because i lost one for a while when i was reviewing that razor chroma keyboard mm -hmm. it doesn't have a roller and i was like I really miss that. I have a 
course, I their really, RGB that I use I love it it. all the time. I love it. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm constantly using it when I'm editing or when I'm turning down volume during a podcast and stuff like that. Just like, I like to be very, very uh, uh, precise with the volume that I'm using on a computer. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have that right there in front of you. Well, also not Thank having you, to like Alienware. click and open and slide. No, yes, that's so wheel. annoying. Especially if you don't have a knob like on your headphone or on your speakers right in front of you. So it's great to have that option right there. So thank you. Fully RGB programmable. Totally I see the rainbow programmable. right here. Yeah, I prefer the rainbow, but you can change it. You can make it do the breathe pattern. You can do fireworks. You can just adjust it to be static if you want to. There's plenty of options in the software. Uh, you can also turn it off with the little alien icon up in the corner like so. Oh, wow. Or you can turn it down with the little function keys too. Uh, there are 13 different zones. So if you want to do a zone for WASD, for example, right. and a zone for the macro keys, you can change those to be different color combos. Uh, and it also has the same design as the mouse. So they have really good continuity across their devices. So if you buy one and then get the other, then it'll match on your, right. on your keyboard or on your desktop, which is a very, very nice thing to have. It also has the nylon cable. The palm rest on here is optional. That's an optional uh, how, thing that you can purchase. How much was the palm rest? Uh, that was, it's the AW168, and you can get it on Dell's site for $24.99. How much is the keyboard? And the keyboard, again, was $119.99 or $107 on Amazon. So it's like 20% of the cost of the keyboard. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I actually, I was okay with the palm rest. I like that it's magnetically mm -hmm. uh, connected to the keyboard, which is nice. And it also adjusts depending on where you choose to uh, put the feet sure. on the keyboard, which is cool. So it's not going to fall off if you change where the feet are on your, uh, on your keyboard. But it's plastic. It's that same soft touch feel mm -hmm. as the mouse. I prefer ones that are padded just because I've gotten so used to having a padded palm rest, so that's my preference now. But it still works, right. so it's it's perfectly fine to have on here. And I do prefer having a palm rest on there as opposed to not having one. Uh, and as I mentioned, the leg angles, there's three different options on that. Oh, so cool. if you want to pop it up to either leg angle one or leg angle two, or put it down on the ground as you had it originally, that's totally fine. And it also has really, really nice big rubber feet on the bottom too, so it's not so going to slip sliding inside. sliding around though. Yeah, it, it really won't slide on like a mouse pad like this unless you like pull it really hard, <laughs> but I, I really liked it. I'm like it watching you yank keyboard. it by the cable. I know, I'm like, that's a bad idea. I, pres I should not do that. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Available now? Yep, available now on the website or on Amazon.com as well as other retailers, and it's a very good one. I really liked it. As a gamer, do you feel that this is turning you into a killing machine? I was already a killing machine. Shoot. <laughs> Find me in Counter-Strike, boy. How many macros have you programmed on the mouse yet? Two. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's two more than I've ever managed to program on a mouse. <laughs> I don't know. The six buttons on the side. What going on here, people? <laughs> Got a new build video up for the patrons at patreon.com slash tech thing. Becoming a patron, get your name on our wall of thanks listed in the show. We even do monthly hangouts with folks in the $10 and up tiers. More patron treats are coming. And hey, we love your questions, even if you aren't a patron. Email ask at techthing.com. And if you hate email, feel free to tweet at techthing, at snubs, at Patrick Norton, or post on facebook.com slash techthing. And if you could spare a moment or two to give our video the thumbs up on YouTube, like our Facebook page, or tell a friend about the show, we'd be grateful. And as always, patreon.com slash techthing is your way to help keep the show ad-free and get your eyes and ears on special content that only goes out to our patrons, patreon.com slash techthing. New build video! We got an email from Mark who writes, Hi Shannon and Patrick, first of all, thank you for the heads up about SD Formatter 5.0. I use SD Formatter all the time because I do a lot of stuff on the Raspberry Pi and that is the best app I found for reformatting SD cards prior to installing a distro for my Pi systems. Great news about the new version and I actually had not heard about it yet before your show. Cool. But have you heard about the best SD USB burner ever? Sorry for the screaming caps, <laughs> but last week I ran across a recommendation on the raspberrypi.org site, no less, for a utility called 
Etcher from etcher.io oh. for flashing disk images to SD cards and USB drives. It is cross-platform, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and I have found that it is dirt simple to use, and so far, it just works. Highly recommended, and I have nothing whatsoever to do with Etcher. I just like it, and it is so much simpler than anything else I have used that it is now on every system I use for development. Thanks for all the great work. Regards from Mark in Nashua, New Hampshire. Yay! Thank you. All cap response, no! No, we had not heard about Etcher.io, the best SD USB burner ever! <laughs> but I completely understand the enthusiasm. Um, Etcher.io, burn better. All burn right. images to SD cards and USB drives safely and easily. Cool. Yeah, actually it is really, really cool. Um, Windows, Mac, Linux support, which is really, really awesome. If you've never used it, the traditional tool for this has been the ever reliable, but uh, yes. ever so chill Win32 disk imager, which looks a lot like this. In <laughs> fact, it looks exactly like that. Yep. I don't think it's been up. Well, it's been updated. It has been updated. The GUI interface has not been updated in years. It always works. It, it always, always works. does the job. Yep. But check out Etcher, kids. Um, I got ahead of myself there. Um, so. This, you load it and you get this. Okay. So you select an image. So I'm going to do uh, Volumio for the Odroid C2. And then you select an SD card. Actually, there's only one SD card in here, so I could try to change it, but there's not going to happen because there's no other SD card. So it'll auto-select it. And watch this. This is the best part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you wait. All right. Yay. And then you wait. It's pretty. It's easy to use. It's a clean interface. It's pretty obvious what you're doing. So thank you, Mark, and thanks to Resin.io, who creates Etcher.io for a lovely open source project. Awesome. And as I sit here watching 3%, 5%, <laughs> 6%. It'll get there. Note to self, buy another USB 3.0 micro SD card adapter to replace the two I have lost in the last six months. That reminds me, I need to upgrade some of my USB flash drives because they are so slow. Slow. Ugh. Hey, if you have, well, we said it last week. If you got a favorite utility you want to share with the Tech Bing crew, please, chances are we don't know about it. There's so many awesome ones out there. Look, there I'm vibrating with the all caps of joy. Like C, C Cleaner, just kidding. <laughs> We got another suggestion. <laughs> we'll talk about that next oh, week. Oh, good. Yeah. In any case, send it to askatechthing.com. We will share it with the Tech Thing universe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We got an email from Brian at askatechthing.com. He says, hey, guys, love the show. I recently purchased the Dell 38-inch wide monitor you featured. It is great. I am attaching it to a Dell TV16 dock, which I then attach to my Dell XPS 15. Cool. My question. I can attach the monitor to the dock via the DisplayPort cable or DisplayPort over USB-C. I attached via the latter and it seems to work fine. My question is, is one better than the other or are there different bandwidth issues, etc.? Thanks from Brian in Altadena, California. Oh my goodness. Yay! Altadena, where's that? Down south. Oh, okay. Short version, same video, same quality, same frame rate. Um, but the USB-C version is way more convenient for laptops because USB-C yes. carries a 100 watt charging ability. Um, if you want to get into detail, and that's what we do here, go to displayport.org and you can learn all about DisplayPort over USB-C. More than you ever wanted to know. Oh, cool. Yeah, so VESA, the group that defines uh, DisplayPort, work with the USB Promoters Group to get full DisplayPort implemented on USB-C. So along with audio and video up to 8K and 60 hertz, awesome. um, with some color bit questions at 8K. Uh, for most folks, we're talking about 4K, 60 hertz, 24 bit color, and simultaneous USB 3.1 data. That's all the video, amazing. all the data, and the same cable can deliver up to 100 watts to your laptop for charging. Man. How cool is that? So beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Gen 1 <laughs> USB 3.1 data is 5 gigabits per second. Gen 2 is up to 10 gigabits per second. Quote support for BT.2020 color space HDR and HCCP 222 or 2.2 if I would say it without stuttering. <laughs> uh, and you can use adapters to plug uh, the DisplayPort into VGA, DVI, HDMI 2.0 with CEC. Um, my boy Robert Heron loves DisplayPort, like with a fiery passion, and wishes it was on all the TVs. Of course, it's on none Not of them. Not surprised there. Oh man, it's so nice and it's so small. Uh, and since they repeat it like 37 times on the DisplayPort website, I'd like to point out that USB-C has a reversible plug orientation and cable direction. Oh yes, it there's does. There's no up, there's no down. That's the best part. Oh, success. Volumio, 
was successfully burned. Come on. Yay! Come on. Come to the floor, <laughs> and, and from the last segment, it's so nice. Flash we is complete. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed using Etcher. They send you a thank you, and then Aww. they ask you to promote them socially. Of course. Um, in any <laughs> case, you can also go into, uh, there's a very specific display port over USB Type-C stuff um, up at the Dell website. Dell notes, quote, USB Type-C connectors and support display port over USB Type-C will normally include the display port logo near the connector. Mm, yes, they will. Because not all USB-C ports actually deliver display port. Right. Because USB Which is so complicated. Yeah, so if it says DP, you're probably good to go. If it doesn't, it probably doesn't. So basically what we're talking about though, in your case, uh, one cable to rule them all, or at least uh, dock all the Windows laptops because Linux driver support on the USB-C stuff is not so awesome. Mm -hmm. If you have actually had success with uh, USB-C docks and your Linux laptop, please email askatechlane.com because the vast majority of the experiences we have communicated with between you and yeah. Darren and several of our friends is that the Linux driver support is lagging yes. Windows support. Yes, so true. Oh my goodness. All right, I think that about wraps it up for this episode of Tech Thing, but remember, once in a while, put down your phone, step away from the screen, close your laptop, and do something analog like El Cantaro. What is an El Cantaro? El Cantaro is the name of my friend. Well, it's his screen name. It's his online screen name. And he is creating this really cool <laughs> tabletop. Entendre. It's a prototype infinity tabletop for an um, upcoming project that he's working on. So it, it looks like it's a mirrored uh, LED, and it looks like it goes on forever down at the bottom. My mom actually made something similar to this as a Halloween feature uh, in her front yard many years ago. And it's really, really cool to see in person. And all the children scream. Oh, pretty much, yeah. So this is cool. I can't wait to see the final uh, tabletop that you come up with, El Cantaro. So thank you for the feature. And <laughs> if you have an analog pick that you want to share with us, you can do what he did, and you can at snubs me on Instagram and then use hashtag analog, hashtag tech thing, or you can just email us. That's probably easiest. Uh, ask at techthing.com with your favorite pictures or tweeting at tech thing too. That works. Thank you so much. I'm Patty Norton. I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on Tech Thing. So the one that my mom created, I know it's so cool. The one that my mom created was a, it was a uh, infinity. Um, Death oh, ball. What's it called? No, it's like Mirror. a. Uh, no, you look into the. Well. Yeah, it was an infinity well. Oh, That's nice. what it was called. So it had mirrors on the top and mirrors on the bottom. So when you look through it, you couldn't see yourself through the mirror because the mirror is facing down, but it's right. see-through. So, but it would bounce the image back and forth, and she had a little bulb on the side poking out. So it looked like there were bulbs, like hundreds of bulbs, going all the way down into the ground, Don't like fall hundreds, in the hundreds well. of feet below you. So you can look down and see this well, and it looks so real. To put this into context, Shannon grew up in a home that was the most amazing thing you've ever seen on a home. It's true. I mean, it's crazy. I've seen pictures. It's unhinged. She was on HGTV for it. That is how legitimate my mom is with her Halloween decorations. Oh, Serious yes. Halloween decorations. Yeah, she she was my the first maker in my life. <laughs>